Hey everyone, today we're going to be rounding up the latest and greatest Mac gaming news stories that don't quite make it as dedicated videos themselves, but are still interesting and are definitely worth mentioning in this compilation. Last time I did this, people said I should be making this a regular feature, so let's see how this goes. So the first big piece of news is the fact that the Resident Evil 2 App Store page has now come online and we have a release date is expected 31st of December 2024. And hopefully this port is going to be just as well optimized as Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Village. Here we have confirmation that a limited part of the base game can be played for free just like Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7. However we also have confirmation here that says that a network connection is required when starting the application and of course this is disappointing it's a form of DRM and it's the same as all the other Resident Evil games. However, it looks like it's going to be an interesting send off for the end of the year, which we'll definitely be covering on this channel when the time comes. So another port that's been announced for the Mac is the horror fishing sim called Dredge, which is going to be released this December. The game is going to be simultaneously released on iPhone, iPad and Mac OS, and it's going to be coming out on December the 18th. Dredge already has a Mac App Store page up, so make sure to go ahead and check it out. And speaking of Mac ports, last week I also talked about how Diablo 3 was getting a native ARM Mac update, despite the fact that none of the other Blizzard titles were getting the same treatment. Well, it turns out that the reason that this is happening is just due to good old fashioned obsolescence. So this insider information comes from viewer Mystical OS, who runs an amazing technical World of Warcraft YouTube channel and is a seasoned Blizzard forum Mac support tech. And he said in a message to me, the reason they updated Diablo 3 is because they were having to keep an old build machine running an ancient version of Xcode and macOS just to keep building the old binary. And it was complicating their build process because every time they did an update, the process involved this hunk of junk. Then they assessed how much effort it would be just to update it to ARM so that they could eliminate this build machine and it turned out that it was a trivial process because Diablo 3 already supports ARM on the Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately this means that Diablo 3 will continue using OpenGL and is not getting modern graphics support. Diablo 2 and Diablo 4 are still never going to come to the Mac. I know people thought Diablo 3 getting Apple Silicon meant future hope, it doesn't. This already has an ARM build, if we extend that to Apple Macs we can retire that junker. So anyway it's really disappointing news to hear that Blizzard don't have any plans to further add Mac support to any of their other games but it's not really that big of a surprise. The good news is that you can actually play the Windows versions of Diablo 2 Resurrected and Diablo 4 great on Apple Silicon Max using Crossover. Check out the links in the description for my tutorial videos. Next we're going to be talking about the MacBook Pro M4 leak. So a Russian YouTuber called Walsacom managed to get their hands on a MacBook Pro M4 ahead of release of everyone else. So the M4 Mac is rumored to be released on Friday the 1st of November so this is really a big scoop. So a lot of people have been asking me what my thoughts are on the leak and the performance of the M4 MacBook Pro. I haven't really looked much into it. I'd rather get my hands on the actual device itself before making any kind of judgments and actually be testing games on it, not just synthetic benchmarks. And I'm definitely looking forward to testing out some of the biggest AAA games that will work on M4 Mac hardware. And last week I talked about new gaming features of Mac OS Sequoia. And thanks to user Creeping1, I've been reminded that we do have a new feature which is wired Xbox controller support. This is also included in the recent releases of iOS. OS 18 and iPad OS 18. And if you connect up your Xbox controller via USB-C on Mac OS Sequoia, then this is going to allow you to play games on the Mac using that controller, which previously was only available for Bluetooth controllers of the same generation. So let me know in the comments if you're still using a wired controller and whether this new update works for you. And also why are you still using a wired controller? I'm quite happy using my Bluetooth setup. And next we're going to be talking about DXMT, which I haven't discussed before. So 3Shane, the developer of DXMT, announced a new level of completeness. So DMXT is a metal-based translation layer for DirectX 11. And this basically competes with two other translation layers, which I'm going to talk about. So basically DXVK is the main one, which is going to be DirectX to Vulkan and then Vulkan to Metal using Molten VK. And basically DXMT is going to be faster because we don't have two translation layers, we just have the one in order to get those Windows DirectX 11 games working on the Mac. The second one is going to be D3D Metal. So that translates DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 onto Metal. The main problem with this implementation is the fact that it is closed source. So Apple do not release the source of that. And so the main advantage of DXMT is the fact that it is open source. So it can be continually maintained. The fact is that something like D3D Metal could actually be dropped at any point. And because it's a closed source project, it means that it could be frozen in time forever. Whereas something like DXMT could potentially be updated indefinitely. So right now, 3Shane is inviting users to 
test this out. It's working in Counter-Strike 2 and Deadlock. It's also bundled into another three chain project called YAGL or yet another anime game launcher for Genshin Impact and also the 14 on Mac launcher for Final Fantasy 14 on Mac. Check out the link in the description for instructions on how to get this working. Next up, there's a brand new FPS analyzing tool called the FPS Analyzer. And what's amazing about this is that it allows you to create graphs and analyze data whilst you are playing a game. So what it does is that it basically reads the data from the metal HUD and helps to chart an average frame rate with the highs and lows. And one of the most interesting features about this is the fact that you can actually upload your data to a new website from the author of FPS Analyzer, which is called the Mac Games DB. So it's a Mac gaming database and it's a place where you can submit your benchmarks and then compare them with operating system versions and different types of Macs. For example, here with a game like Liza P, you can go ahead and look at the different settings that people are using. And you can also submit your own data using the FPS Analyzer tool. It'd be really interesting to see if this picks up. I'll definitely be using this in the future. So make sure to click on the links in the description to check this out. Also, we finally have some PC VR games working on the Apple Silicon Mac. So this is footage of Half-Life Alex being run in a virtual machine through VMware Fusion and a virtual desktop tool called ALVR, which can now actually run things like the Quest 3 wirelessly through the Apple Silicon Mac through that virtual machine. And it's actually apparently working quite well. So a lot of the research on this is being done by a user called King Vulpus from the YouTube channel Night Sight Productions. I'll leave a link to their YouTube video tutorial there. They're also maintaining a Google compatibility document and a lot of the new developments of VR gaming on Mac is being shared on the Discord. So make sure to check it out. And next, there are a lot of big Windows games that have come out recently that also work on the Mac very well through crossover. So most notably, we have games like Silent Hill 2, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, the game Metaphor, and there's also games like Until Dawn, which have an AVX check and requires patching in order to get this working through crossover. I'll leave a link to this in the description. And furthermore, the Ghost of Tsushima flickering texture clothing bug has actually been fixed with an updated version of the F16C patch. So make sure to check that out as well. Anyway, let me know in the comments, do you like this new video format? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.